Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Mile High Stadium on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's AFC Championship time with the New York Jets and the Denver Broncos. Will this be John Elway's last game ever at Mile High Stadium? We think so. Time to perform now. Time to perform. We've been here before. They have. We're going to see. Anybody who touches the ball, suckers, they pay a the price. They pay a price. They're in our house. The road to the Super Bowl is today, baby. One, two, three, four. Let's go, baby. Perhaps the mile high altitude stoked the mile high attitude. But whatever the cause, the effect was clear. The Jets opened the game by opening up their offense. 30, across the 35 for another Jet first down. The New York Jets exploited favorable coverage early on and moved down the field with surprising ease. We thought right from the beginning, Wayne Corbett, based on what happened last week, could have a huge game. They don't match up with him well, and they've really done a nice job so far. Still, the drive stalled, and the first effects of the Rocky Mountain bluster were felt. The kick's got plenty of distance, but he pushed it wide right. That's the win factor. While John Hall couldn't convert, the Jets' Vinny Testaverde couldn't miss, completing his first 13 passes. But New York's running game lacked the same precision. And off of the counter, this is Curtis Martin. Look for a place to run and will gain one Double. or two. Ball is free. Ball is free and the Broncos have it. Curtis Martin took a big shot and Braxton came away with the football and Denver has it back. Can't give these guys opportunities, man. Transforming turnovers into touchdowns is a touchstone of the Broncos' attack. And when John Elway converted a fourth down, it appeared that Denver's offense had come to light. Facing a second fourth down, this time from the one, the Broncos took a shot and went for six. I don't trust the win right now. We're going to go for it fourth and one anyhow. But the bold decision was doomed by the outstretched arms of the Jets' defense. They play act. Elway throws, and it's blocked at the line of scrimmage by Mo Lewis. Should have got that knocked up the field, guys. If he hangs like that, we got to knock his ass up that field. For the remainder of the half, the world champion's play went from bad to worse to downright awful. It's loose, Bruin is touched right there, and the Jets will take over. Both teams battled the win, but it wasn't the only element that chilled the Jets. Now throwing, fires wide open. He fumbles the ball. Still and loose. it is loose on the field. Denver had it first, and I think they have gotten it again. They have, fires with a fumble, and the Jets making mistakes. So far, it hasn't cost them big time, but they were in striking distance of a score. The Broncos never capitalized, and all told, it was the Jets that displayed the stronger will for the game's first 30 minutes. Yet for all their grit and gumption, the best the Jets could muster was a single field goal that broke the scoreless tie. Ball on the way, and it silences the crowd, and we are going to the break with the Jets ahead. The city of Denver is used to the deafening roar from Mile High Stadium. But as the second half began on this Sunday afternoon, the cheers were dramatically silenced. This gap, they got it, they block it, and the Jets recover it. The block by Blake Spence. He came right up the middle, and he took that ball off the foot of Tom Ruin. Blocked it cleanly, and it was recovered. It doesn't really matter who recovers it, because it's going to be the Jets' ball at the half-yard line. The Jets responded with their longest touchdown drive, 18 inches. Touchdown, New York Jets, Curtis Martin. For the moment, the Jets' defense had confused the Broncos. And when wide receivers Rod Smith and Ed McCaffrey lined up in the wrong positions, disaster seemed imminent. But the Broncos have a master of disaster. A little disorganized, and they're set. Nope, play fit. Elway, deep in the pocket. 
Loads it up. Got McCaffrey wide open. He makes the catch. McCaffrey's inside the 20-yard line. A big throw by John Elway. With two perfect passes, Elway righted the sinking Bronco offense. Time throws. Pass over the middle. Caught. Howard Griffin's at the goal line. Touchdown, Denver. The players need it. The fans need it. This, too. Great protection. Elway waited for Griffin to come all the way across the field before he broke over. Mother Nature played her biggest role of the game on the ensuing kickoff. She was a fickle mistress and a Broncos fan for sure. Elam to kick it off. Either Megan or Kevin Williams, and he kicks it short and high. They have to let it hit. It's a free ball. It is a free ball. It is loose on the ground. They die for it. Broncos say they've got it. And they do. The wind helps the Broncos on the kickoff. That ball hit about the 25. In that case, the guy in the wedge has got to recognize that and get up and catch the football. That was not a design short kick. He just kicked it short. So two huge plays. Three actually in a row. The weirdest game we've seen all year. Snap is good. Placement down. Jason's got it on its way. It is perfect. Jason Elam has come up big here in the second half. Elam's second field goal made the score 13 to 10. And late in the third quarter, the Broncos special team struck. This time with a 36 yard punt return by Darian Gordon. New York defense had kept Terrell Davis in check, but in the end game, the grand master of running backs made all the right moves to checkmate the Jets. Davis rushed for 167 yards and a brilliant 31-yard touchdown. Left side TD. Terrell squares. He's got the first down and a big hole. Terrell, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Can you say MVP? right through a tackler at about the 15-yard line and was, from that point on, home free. Terrell Davis now ties John Riggins. In 10 minutes, Denver turned a 10-point deficit into a 10-point lead. Sometimes you got to be very careful for what you ask for. They asked for it, and they got it. Trailing 20 to 10 in the final quarter, the Jets' offensive game plan looked sharp until it ran into guys like Steve Atwater. That's one of those hits that you see on NFL films where you say, ow. The Broncos forced three ruinous turnovers that included two interceptions by number 21, Darian Gordon. Testimony fires over the middle, pass deflected, and I intercept it again. And you can make your reservations for Miami. The defending champion is now rearing what they do so well, win big games. The clock strikes midnight for the New York Jets. The season is over for Bill Parcells and his New York Jets. And the season continues from Mike Shanahan and his Denver Broncos. Back to back, let's go home. <laughs> ah, move. Back to back, let's go home. Hey, hey. are going back to the Super Bowl. They are AFC champions for the second consecutive year. They have beaten the New York Jets 23 to 10. The Denver Broncos are going back to defend their world championship in Super Bowl 33 this time in what should be John Elway's last game. Janet Elway had witnessed many glorious moments, but perhaps none more emotional than what might be her husband's last triumph at Mile High Stadium. Only time will tell whether this triumphant moment would be John Elway's last goodbye, or thumbs up for another season.